Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day to start things off. SBI Holdings, virtual currency exchange platform, VC Trade, scheduled to launch this month has been postponed once again in light of new data that has resurfaced. According to the recent documents released by the SBI Group, the launch is now scheduled to take place in July 2019. The document attached below indicates the same. I guess here's a bit of a timeline thing that they decided to release for everybody. Uh, a Twitter user known as XRP Research commented, there are some positive slides in the presentation, though. Uh, the exchange was first launched in July 2018. I think the first time that we heard about this was in... It had to be 2017. However, it restricted the withdrawal of cryptocurrencies and limited users from using the hardware wallet referred to as the designated wallet by the company. This was to ensure the compliance of anti-money laundering laws and preventing money laundering or terrorist financing, which is a uh, particularly tough with cryptocurrencies. The exchange officially announced the feature to trade XRP, BTC, and ETH. And after a careful examination, allowed users to trade Bitcoin Cash as well. This has been a very long time coming. This is another, this is becoming the new uh, Coinbase as far as like just finally listing things. SBI, we've heard about SBI, it's, it's been at least since 2017 that they were talking about that they were going to launch this at the beginning of 2018 and then it was spring 2018 and then it was summer 2018 and then it was the end of the year 2018. It's been, it's been knocked back at least four or five times already. Uh, not exactly sure what they're planning, what they're doing, what the entire thing is. Uh, I don't know if I feel like most of the time when people do things like this or companies or organizations or banks uh, push things back, I think that they're trying to match up with other uh, mega industry players around the world to kind of uh, coordinate their launches or maybe have it like just before something else major comes out. But when you do things like this for too long, it kind of destroys the hype. Uh, this is why uh, Constantinople was a big deal, but then it wasn't a big deal when we finally got it because they, it was delayed for over two years. Uh, I have a very strong inkling that because of all these delays, first of all, if they decide to delay once again, if they are supposed to launch in July and they say that they're not going to do it until like September, you can forget about it as far as like where this is going to push the market. People were very excited because this is one of the largest banking institution, company groups, whatever you want to call it in Japan. And the fact that they had announced uh, full support for XRP and then they announced support for Bitcoin and Ethereum, everyone was like, it's going to drag these coins into the stratosphere because we finally have a major banking institution who's talking about using cryptocurrencies and also per, they were there were rumors about them potentially using XRP for their remittance services and everyone's like this is this is it this is the moment but when you take too long you destroy a lot of the hype and this is exactly what they're doing i don't know if is you know this could all be something that they have been planning on for a long time to try and get the hype up but i think a lot of these companies don't realize that if you say that you're going to launch something a year and a half ago two years ago and we get nothing i mean july that's that's so far away already like that's in the cryptocurrency space so much can happen in a short amount of time the original idea for sbi when they were talking about launching in 2017 the guy uh who owns the bank said that when they did launch that they were going to become the number one exchange like that he said in a snap we're going to be number one people aren't going to realize it's going to happen very very fast that was also in the, what was that the, the beginning of 2018 still haven't launched anyway uh, let's move on. Next up, the Ethereum Foundation has awarded a grant to researchers at Columbia and Yale universities for the completion, compilation of a new smart contract programming language into the Ethereum virtual machine. The development was announced in a press release shared with Cointelegraph on the 6th of March. The beneficiary of the grant is a smart contract R&D project called Deep Sea, spearheaded by Professor Rongi Gu, an assistant professor of computer science at Columbia in collaboration with the researchers at Yale. Gu was also the co-founder of blockchain security firm Certic, okay, which is also one of the participants in the project that raised several million in a funding round led by Binance Labs last October. The new grant forms part of the foundation's fifth wave of financing under the Aegis of Ethereum Foundation Grants Program devoted to developing or supporting 
kind of developing. Ethereum 2.0 and Layer 2 scaling efforts. DeepSea is named after a smooth, new smart contract programming language originally created at the research lab of Professor Shao, Department Chair of Computer Science at Yale and Goo's fellow co-founder at Certic. So we're, not, we're now seeing a lot more cryptocurrency projects starting to partner with universities. We saw the, I think Cardano has done this. I think the people from Ripple have also been partnering with many universities. Uh, and now I, I don't know if, mm, I feel like it's part, it's two things. They're probably trying to find, uh, they, they're probably trying to establish themselves with very well-known institutions and organizations and companies. And I think, you know, partnering as it were with Columbia and Yale to be able to find new solutions kind of gives them like a leg in to say that we have worked with uh, reputable sources before because a lot of the cryptocurrency projects, at least in my opinion, that we're seeing around right now, um, if you don't know the word lollygagging, they've been lollygagging. They've been playing around. They've been trying. They, they, they've been focusing so much on actually trying to get the code together over the last three years. A lot of them still don't even have the proper updates that we were promised three to four years ago uh, that I think that they're coming to the realization that they kind of have to get themselves out there and really have to uh, show that they are legit because in the eyes of many, cryptocurrency projects aren't really doing a lot. They're just these speculative coins, but I feel like with the... Um, I feel like so many of them now are finally getting to that point where they're finally making a a, a PR team and they're kind of going out there kind of talking to... This is, this is just how I feel. Because so many of them were developing the software for so long not realizing that they were falling behind because they weren't actually creating any real partnerships like partnerships within the cryptocurrency space is you know partnership to partnership that's wonderful that's great uh but real world partnerships as far as like uh binding with a university or an organization or a company or so and so or a bank these are the things that are actually needed for real world adoption on the other side of that as well what we've seen from the team at ripple is that and i'm pretty sure i've read this multiple times as well that they were opening uh, nodes in these universities, like they partnered with the university, and I don't know if it was the students or the teachers or the faculty who exactly did it, but they were running full nodes inside of these universities. So I feel like they may also be trying to do something like this as well, where they're getting these nodes out there to just say that it's not just us or other cryptocurrency enthusiasts running them, it's also uh, major universities around the world. I don't know, it's kind of my own opinion. We're seeing a lot of talk about uh, crypto projects, uh, merging or joining or partnering with universities around the world when there was no talk of this at all throughout the entirety of 2018 barely like a sliver in 2019 there was almost nothing at all in 2017 except for once again for the ripple team because they know how to market themselves anyway let's move on Charon is in the news today. It says, okay, EX's customers, the customer to customer service uh, continues to gain momentum as it now supports Tron. The Marta base exchange has collaborated with the Tron foundation to bring fiat to cryptocurrency trading on a peer to peer level. The CTT market supports the fiat currencies of the British pound, the Chinese renminbi, the Vietnamese dong, Russian ruble, and the Thai bat or bot. Uh, Andy Chung, head of operations at OKEX, explained why the addition of Tron was bought about by the demand for the digital asset. He said, other than helping blockchain startup projects, we constantly review and take in new st stories and new tokens with huge market demands. In view of Tron's recent development, we're very confident that the project's ambitious movements will significantly help building a better blockchain ecosystem. We're thrilled to have Tron in our C2C market, especially after seeing the consistency consistently good performance of the tokens in our spot and derivatives markets yep that's the end of it uh i'm not a huge fan of tron one might say but what does make me more optimistic on the price of the coin for the future comes to the fact that tron is being added to many different uh exchanges projects uh customer to customer markets I feel like I think Tron's all-time high before was 25 cents. I think it's currently sitting at two cents. I don't think it's at one cent anymore. Uh, this is probably one of the very few reasons why I would even think of investing in Tron at least once. No, it has to at least be three or four times a week. I was going to say once a day, like three or four times a week. We get news about Tron being added onto another platform. I, I miss a lot of them because it's just far too much. Um... But I could definitely see, I mean, realistically, Tron per token will probably hit around 50 cents someday. If not, I want to say 60 to 70 cents per token. I'm not going to say a, a full 
one dollar or two dollar even people are talking about like a ten dollar tron why not uh as far as yeah tron hitting its its previous all-time high and then going a bit further tron has been added to a lot of platforms uh justin sun has done very well in that aspect regardless of if people in the industry think that it may be considered a security, that's neither here nor there. That's not even like a really a thing. Uh, there's so many people who are into uh, who the, the the reason why we have the security uh, conversation is because a lot of Bitcoin maximalists decided that it was it was something negative to be considered a security because of the old world of finance and stuff like that. A lot of coins, anything that had an ICO right now is going to be considered a security. So uh, don't get yourself in a bunch because whatever coins you love are probably considered securities as well. Regardless of that, uh, the money to be made from Tron is definitely there. During a, a bull market, when prices are going back up, I assume, I think that Tron will probably do very well, simply because, uh, like I said, we got to 25 cents before when Tron was on, like, three exchanges, and it's on at least 25 different exchanges around the world right now, at least. I've completely lost count and track, uh, but I think Tron is definitely, it's it's a coin for me, uh, I don't have any long-term prospects for it, regardless of if they become the largest coin in the entire world. I don't feel right about the project, uh, but as far as making money from it, as far as like when the coin goes up and cashing out of it, it's definitely, I think, a, a hold, uh, at least in my opinion. Litecoin is once again in the news going to fly over this one. It kind of has to tie into the news that we had from yesterday and the news from before that. And the Litecoin is, Litecoin's price has been shooting up in value. I think it's up... What is over 130% over the last couple of weeks alone? It's it's kind of insane. It was at $23, and now I think it's at like 56. Yeah, 56 over here. It's, it's, it's completely nuts how far Litecoin has been jumping. There are a lot of people that we call whale watchers out there who have been realizing that also large transactions involving Litecoin have been flying back and forth between wallets. And it appears that there was uh, the second largest Litecoin wallet actually received 32,000 Litecoin in one fell swoop. Uh, I think people are taking notice. I think people are starting to accumulate. I wish we had proper metrics for exactly how many cryptocurrencies not each person had, but you, you kind of get what I'm saying because I think we'd see crypto moving in a rapidly different pace if we had indications of exactly how much crypto hasn't moved and is not going to move anytime soon. I mean, you can't really contact this person and say, hey, do you do you plan on selling your thirty two thousand anytime soon? And they send you back like a nice little letter, the letter that says no on it. Uh, because I think people are constantly underestimating exactly how many of each coin out there is actually moving, or rather not moving. Even though there are supposed to be eighty four million Litecoin in total, I have a very strong feeling that at least. A good 30 to 40 percent of that is probably not going to move anytime soon. And I also wonder, people always discuss how much uh, Bitcoin has been lost because, uh, you know, old computers being thrown out and this happening and people using uh, losing uh, passwords and passcodes and passphrases and, and keys and et cetera, et cetera. I'm pretty sure a large number of a huge amount of Litecoin is also lost as well, because around the same exact time where Bitcoin was floating around the hundreds, uh, Litecoin was like a dollar. So I can imagine that a lot of people probably didn't pay as much attention to it as they probably should have. Had several thousand of them on the computer, but they were probably mining them. And now these coins are lost forever. But there's no proper metric because a lot of people tend to pay more attention to Bitcoin than they do to Litecoin. But let's move on. I thought this one was kind of cool. Uh, I mean, it's, it is it is very cool. U.S. startup Vault Tech has introduced a hardware cryptocurrency wallet designed to fit into a mobile SIM card tray. They said this a couple of days ago. The solution reportedly combines a mobile application and a hardware chip, dubbed the Vault Tel card. The crypto storage solution will be sold in the U.S. starting two days ago and will immediately expand to European countries via Vault Tech's United Kingdom subsidiary. For those who are thinking about buying this, do your own research. I know nothing about this company. I just thought it was kind of cool that they have this. The wallet uses biometric authentica authentication. Along with the military-grade encryption standard AES-512, the press release reports. According to the firm, users can lock the Vault Tel card to a single device into a particular geographical location. That's a little intense. To store funds, customers can either insert the Vault Tel card inside an unused SIM card tray, in the case of a dual SIM capacity, 
or connect the chip to their phone via an accessory such as a dongle. The corresponding mobile app will then let users interface with their stored funds. I, I thought it was kind of cool because of the it's a it's a SIM card that goes normally goes into your phone, but now it's a it's a cryptocurrency hardware wallet. I just thought that was kind of cool and I wanted to talk about it. Uh, like I said, I know nothing about the company, so if you do plan on buying, investing, testing them out, uh, what I typically do is me is I wait a bit. I wait about two or three weeks, not even joking, because you typically have people... Remember when the old iPhones used to come out and people used to stand online for like a week before and then they would get the iPhone and they would turn it on and something wouldn't be right? Like, so, like you know, the, the, the first couple of weeks, there, were, there was always a couple of problems and then Apple would like re-release the phone, but like they wouldn't call it a re-release. They would kind of like just push more out there even though it was a re-release and they would kind of uh, have solved that older problem. Uh, I usually wait a week to see who else buys the stuff and uh, see if they have problems and then if new ones are pushed out. I mean, not to be pessimistic, but not all tech that comes out first is usually the best tech. Uh, it does sound like a great idea, but just make sure you're not one of the first people buying it uh, and then it doesn't work on you and then you become a uh, a story that other people have to look to to see if it actually works. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, here's probably the weirdest news story of the day. The internet was set ablaze when rumors began circulating that Samsung's flagship smartphone known as the Galaxy S10 may potentially support cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum via a blockchain keystone application. Samsung's reveal event confirmed the existence of the blockchain keystone app that serves as the crypto wallet for top cryptos. However, the most important cryptocurrency of all, eh, Bitcoin, won't be supported at launch according to initial reports from unboxing videos from around the web. The Samsung Galaxy S10 doesn't officially drop for until today, but some lucky smartphone enthusiasts have gotten their hands on the final retail version of Samsung's phone. Those with early access to the Galaxy S10 have uploaded unboxing videos to demonstrate the key features of the phone, one of which is a new crypto wallet called Blockchain Keystone. One particular video demonstrates reveals that the Samsung Galaxy S10 will launch without supporting Bitcoin. The leading crypto by market cap, the app does, however, support Ethereum out of the box. It's not known at the time if the ERC-20 tokens are further supported using the Ethereum wallet. Many other crypto wallets prioritize Ethereum due to the same wallet address being used to receive Ether. However, the absence of Bitcoin is a glaring omission as Bitcoin has the highest market cap out of any cryptocurrencies, has the most regulatory support, and the highest transaction volume is also the face of cryptocurrencies in the public eye. I saw this and thought this was very interesting. I wonder what the move is for this. I wonder why they did this. Uh, I wonder if it had something to do... You, you never know what happens behind the scenes. You never ha know what happens behind, I want to say, closed doors. Uh, but this was definitely done on purpose. I don't know if their reasoning would be that Bitcoin is too slow, that Bitcoin is so and so and so, or if they, whoever Samsung is collectively, had been a supporter of Ethereum for a long time. Many people, for those who don't know, when Ethereum first came out, uh, people called it a scam, and then there was a huge shift immediately, like a huge, in the cryptocurrency space immediately, you were either uh, for Bitcoin or for Ethereum. There was really no heads or tails about it. If you were an Ethereum head, you were someone who believed in the future of a project that could grow, you know, immensely large. When it when it was first when it first came out, uh, Vitalik Buterin said that Ethereum was going to be like its own internet. It would be the internet of the internet. If that kind of makes any sense, I know it doesn't, but this is what he said. It, it, it would be like its own insane ecosystem, and this is why you see a lot of people when they talk on television. Uh, they talk about the the future of Ethereum as the future of the cryptocurrency space, and they don't even really mention Bitcoin. So it could be one of those situations where these people uh, got into cryptocurrency, saw that Ethereum was coming out, decided to give it a backing, and this is why we see sometimes it's not Novogratz. What's, it's one of the other people who always brags that he got Ethereum at like a dollar or something like that, and he bought up millions of them, so he's Ethereum wealthy. Uh the people from Coinbase did this exact same thing, and this is why we also had news a couple of weeks ago that Bitcoin had finally been added to the Coinbase wallet. The people were like, why does, why did it take them so long? It's because the CEO of Coinbase announced many times before that he thought that Ethereum was the future of the cryptocurrency space and that Ethereum was going to be the coin that everyone would use, and therefore he was backing Ethereum even though he still 
said that he believed in Bitcoin, which I think was hogwash or uh, uh, BS, as some people might say it. Them adding only Ethereum could be something, I mean... I don't know exactly how far this will go. It's a very weird move because when you talk about cryptocurrencies to anyone who doesn't even have cryptocurrency and you say, do you know what crypto is? They'll usually go, I have no idea what that is. And you go, do you know what Bitcoin is? They'll shake their head. Yeah, I heard about it on TV a couple of times. If you go, do you know what Ethereum is? They won't really understand what you're saying. It'll seem like another language to them. It could be them trying to make Ethereum more mainstream. It could be them eventually at some point thinking about potentially adding Bitcoin to their wallet system, whatever you kind of want to call it. Whatever it is, it's very fascinating. I wonder if it's going to also support other ERC-20 tokens because if they just have Ether on it, it could be that they you know, have some type of a partnership with the Ethereum Foundation to just add Ether and then to add Bitcoin eventually and then add Litecoin you know, as they roll out updates and say, yeah, we're also doing this, we're also doing that, we're awesome. If it's just Ether and they're also supporting all the other ERC-20 tokens the same exact way that Coinbase said that they would be adding or they, they would be adding support for ERC-20 tokens before any other coin because adding Ethereum gives you access to potentially hundreds if not thousands thousand of other coin. Uh, it's a very weird move. I wonder exactly how this is going to play out for them, especially since the phone's main feature doesn't seem to be we are a blockchain phone. It seems to be like the the, the next iteration of Samsung's Galaxy lineup, uh, but with a cryptocurrency twist. So I don't know exactly where this is going to go. Uh, we've already seen a couple of other phones that don't seem to specifically support Bitcoin. If I'm not mistaken, the 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 Pundi X and the Electronium phone uh, didn't really throw out there that they were also supporting Bitcoin. They also had like mining features, air quotes, for their own tokens, especially for the uh, Electronium, Tronium, Electronium, Electronium phone. Very interesting. Uh, it's interesting to see how you expect something, but then it doesn't end up happening normal people i think everyone out there assumed at some point that bitcoin would i mean i was talking about this before remember i was saying i said i assumed that the only coins that they're going to support out the gate were would be bitcoin and ethereum and now it's just ethereum if they start adding other coins and bitcoin's not one of them this is a clear marketing move there are still a lot of people out there who don't believe in bitcoin at all at all at all at all um not even just xrp people or EOS people, there are tons of people who don't think that Bitcoin is going to make it. They think that Bitcoin's uh, dominance in the market is going to falter once we have the next bull run. But I want I want to see exactly how they're going to play this out because not adding Bitcoin is a definite. Uh, it's not a spit in the face, but it's definitely like eh, they're trying to send the message that they believe more in Ether than they do in Bitcoin. At least in my opinion, this is kind of how I'm uh, reading the situation. Let's move on. To kind of finish things off, as we head closer to the final decision from the, I think, the Indian government and also their uh, central bank as to what they're going to do in cryptocurrencies, uh, this article talks about, um, for those who aren't looking at the screen, it says, warning, India is headed towards clueless Bitcoin regulation, and here's why. They talk about all the moves that the Reserve Bank of India has been doing against cryptocurrencies since 2013. That was, it says December 2013, that was five and a half five and some change years ago Uh, and says to be fair every other country around the world was doing the exact same thing they were all talking about the risks one of the main really important things about this is actually uh the podcast i was listening to a couple days ago they were talking about why bitcoin is so robust and why bitcoin is so large and why bitcoin is going to have a very hard time or rather other people would have a very hard time trying to uh execute a 51 percent attack or actually control destroy the network as it were it's because around this time And even before this, around 2013, 2012, 2011, it was incredibly easy to destroy the Bitcoin network. Governments could have done it overnight if they wanted to. However, none of them saw it as a threat. Bitcoin being worth, you know, 10, 15, 20, $100. Wow, that's amazing. It's nerd money. It's not going to go anywhere. No one really paid attention to it. And as we are where we are right now, Bitcoin's network has grown so large that it's almost uh, not nothing is impossible. But you would need an enormous amount of money to even think about trying to destroy it. Uh, yeah, just thought I'd throw that in. They were talking about how uh, years ago, uh, Bitcoin developers knew that this was possible, but everyone kind of held their breath. And then at, at some point they were like, okay, it's 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 no longer like really an option. But uh, back then it was. Anyway, 
Uh, they talk about all the other countries, how, you know, what they've done and so and so and so. And it says the only concrete steps that the world, the sixth largest economy, took all these years over the last five and a half, six years were raiding cryptocurrency startups, portraying Bitcoin as a scam via half-baked media m- messages, and to top it all off, uh, ban its banking sector from offering services to cryptocurrency industry. When the Western economy had moved forward with Bitcoin, India started walking backwards. We had news a couple of weeks ago. I'm not, I'm not even sure of the time frame anymore that India, over four weeks, was going to give concrete crypto regulation. I don't remember if it was the government or the um, the RBI. Uh, someone said something. Yeah, there we go. And just four weeks, but this was this was also several weeks ago when we had this information. I don't, I'm not even sure of the exact time frame that we have before. Uh, according to people within India, not even just from this article, it appears that things aren't going to go very well. Uh, the government still has no idea what they're doing. I think they, like many other governments, assumed that cryptocurrencies were going to kind of falter. I understand. I get it. You know, not really thinking that this was going to be something is totally understandable. At the very beginning as well, uh, crypto just seemed like a fad. It seemed like a digital money on the internet wow that's pretty cool i'll become a millionaire from it someday you don't really understand the actual reason why it was made why it was born why people are using it uh it's going to be quite interesting because they only have a couple of weeks left i think it's like been mandated that they actually have to that you have to give some type of regulation uh many people assume that they're not going to ban it uh but they may follow the footsteps of many other countries around the world who have done these like sandbox things where you have to uh you like you get like five streets within the city every one of these five streets you can build your crypto project but the government has to be able to sit over your shoulder at every single step they kind of say what you can and cannot do with your project and it could lead to a situation where uh nothing is able to properly grow in that country which is once again a shame because uh it's countries like this that are able to benefit from it the most i know it sounds completely stupid and even you you know utopian what have you uh i feel like in so many situations like this especially situations that we're seeing in south america and also parts of africa if leaders took leadership roles and came out and said uh or at least like announce things to their country first like just to their country via you know whatever so and so and so and announce that uh they are going to support these coins and even maybe encourage their citizens to buy these coins like i said kind of utopian kind of stupid I just like the idea of helping people and I feel like these governments just don't really care. And what's going to end up happening is like it's fairly obvious at this point that crypto is not going anywhere. And I don't even mean that as far as like, yeah, Bitcoin's the best. Bitcoin's going to win. I mean, like uh, with JP Morgan Chase getting into the game in some fashion, Fidelity getting into it, the Nasdaq, the New York Stock Exchange, the Jamaican Stock Exchange, all the other stock exchanges, all the other universities who are all the other pension funds, all these other things who are buying into cryptocurrencies right now. It's fairly clear with the amount of money that's been pushed into this. It's going to take either a very long time for people to pull out of it and lose faith in it. Or it's going to continue like the monster truck that it is and going to continue rolling forward. And a lot of countries that could potentially uh, be some of the wealthiest countries in the entire world are not even paying attention to it. We're going to get uh, information about this, I assume, within the next two weeks. It's going to be very weird because if they, I mean, they're not going to do it with with, with, uh, with open arms. That's just not going to happen. Uh, I think crypto would explode as far as prices because of the amount of support that would happen. You know, they have over a billion people in the country, at least five to 10% of them, 50 million to 100 million people know about cryptocurrencies and then would probably start buying even fractions of cryptocurrency. Uh, But I'm going to assume that they're going to do the sandbox thing and I'm going to assume that they're going to probably only allow, like we've seen in many other countries where they're probably going to only allow Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP. As we know, maybe not even XRP, but we know that Ripple has uh, an office in India. I think so does Cardano. I wouldn't be shocked if only certain coins were allowed through, but I'm not expecting anything good. And it's a very, very, very bad uh, look on their part because in five years time, it's like I was, um, I, w- I was listening to something before and it was very interesting. They were talking about when the internet first came out and there were so many companies and corporations and countries. Uh, and I think France was actually one of them really interesting that didn't want to adopt the internet because they thought it was simply uh, that, uh, they were trying to downplay it as if it was just you sending something through the mail 
uh, but quicker? Or like, why would anybody want to use this slow dial-up thing? Why would anyone want to use this? There were a couple European countries, but I remember hearing the word France, and there were a couple of other, you know, you know, companies who made faxes and telephones. They probably weren't the most thrilled that these things were going to happen. Well, they downplayed it for so long, and then these these uh, companies ended up completely falling, you know, falling apart, falling behind. And, and it was the countries who realized, hey, uh, it may take a minute to load that photo. But it's a lot quicker than me having to send something and it takes a week and a half. These countries ended up becoming some of the hugest economic powerhouses that we have right now. Kind of weird, kind of strange, but it is what it is. Sorry, I had to move stuff on my desk. Not that you can see my desk, but I have pens and paint and microphones and pieces of paper and all this other stuff all over the place. Anyway... I think that is definitely going to do it for this video. The crypto prices aren't doing too bad. They're rather not doing anything. Last night when I went to bed, Bitcoin was at 3906. It's now at 3948. Hopefully this uptrend continues. Apparently, uh, according to the mythical analysts out there, we need to pass by the $4,000 mark uh, in order to push higher, obviously, to 4200. And I think 4800 is kind of the... Uh, one of the magical numbers, but apparently we need to get Bitcoin past $6,000 to show that we are once again in a bull trend. I worry because we are nearing the weekend. This happens every single time. Bitcoin goes up during the week. And as we get towards the weekend, even though crypto is a 24-hour business, it's not sliding down. Uh, the only good thing to look at is that Bitcoin's volume is typically around $5 billion. It is now sitting at $8.8 I uh, hope that continues to go higher because normally... Uh, it's a good indication of where prices are going to go when Bitcoin is uh, trending sideways, not really moving at all, but the volume is kind of bubbling up if you will. All right, everybody, that is definitely going to do it for this video. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and listening. I do appreciate all of your support. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Car Birch Enough, Cody. Jeffrey Ramsey, Richie Richard III, Amy Starsheen, Jeremy Fox, Jared Schneider, Jim Gardner, Crypto Joe, Joey Carafa, Wise Night Owl, Singer, Songwriter, Mike Savitz, Nick Kanaya, Anthony Charles, Yasha Harari, Travis Haynes, Nick Mangialavori, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Arthur Yakud, L. Doug, Brady Niels, Rai Rai, Gilboa Snake, and Vlad the Impaler. Thank you all an immense amount for your support. I do appreciate it. And yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. See you.